time on a mission. You make a 3D printed engine that drives to 10,000 RPM. My best run so far? 6,000 RPM. The engine started its life with an 80cc displacement and a tendency to explode every 5 minutes. So I started throwing all sorts of mods at this engine and each mod took us one step closer to our goal. And today we are taking another step forward. Hello my friends and welcome to my laboratory. So let me show you all of the mods this engine got since the last episode. One of the parts that failed after our last run is the PLA plus cylinder body which started melting at the contact point with the head due to excessive heat. So I jumped into fusion and designed another cylinder body. I went with the modular design because I want the part that has the most heat exposure to be printed out of a material that has a higher heat resistance. And this is what it it looks after printing. As you can tell, the body is made out of two parts. The bottom part was printed out of blue PLA plus, and the top part that goes in direct contact with the hot head is printed out of carbon fiber reinforced nylon. The cylinder body still has the water inlet and outlet, so the cooling system can be used. Inside this new body, I'm gonna use the old cylinder sleeve because it has no major scratches and should hold compression just fine. Pair that with the new carbon fiber reinforced nylon piston and we have a pretty solid setup so far. The cylinder is ready to install, I just wanna mention that the crankcase is the original PLA plus crankcase. Inside we have a crankshaft made by PCB Way that ran amazing so far and we still have the original carbon fiber reinforced nylon connecting rod. The next problem that I'm gonna address is the old head. This design has a couple of major flaws. First of all, all the exhaust gases and heat are directed straight to the crankshaft pulley on the timing side of the engine, which damaged the camshaft pulley to the point of destruction. The next big flaw is the fact that there is a lot of unused space inside the cylinder, which means we still have a lot of performance left on the table. So I jumped into Fusion and I designed the new head, a dual overhead cam setup with four valves and high flow intake and exhaust ports with a modular style just because at some point in the future i want to add a variable valve system and the modular style head is gonna help me with that when it comes to my head designs one of the most important part that can make or break this assembly is the aluminum base plate which is extremely hard to make by hand but luckily my Kera stepped in right in time and sent me this absolute unit of a machine which is called carvera air let's actually put this bad boy at work so i strapped in a piece of aluminium i inserted the laser wired probe in the tool head the wired probe automatically measures the material height sets precise z0 and compensates for uneven surfaces ensuring an accurate cut Next up I'm installing this single flute bit for metal which comes with the machine and I let the Carvera Air do its thing for the next 20 minutes. The machine is beginner friendly, all the softwares are easy to use and pretty much straightforward. Now let's check out the quality of these cuts. I'd say that's an easy 10 out of 10. This thing looks professionally made. They also sent me all of these accessories, like a Ford Axis, a laser module, a lot of beads, all sorts of accessories. If you guys want to check out the Carvera Air and all the accessories that come with it, go ahead and click the link in the video description. Once again, big thank you to my Kera for sponsoring this video. Check out the difference between the old and the new aluminum plate for the head, night and day difference. Next step was printing all the other components. We have the mid part of the head in black printed out of carbon fiber reinforced nylon and the rest of the parts are printed out of PLA+. Just as a side note, I went through four redesigns for the valve train system, so there are gonna be some components that are gonna change shape in the next few clips. Next up, I sealed the aluminum base plate to the mid head using this high temp gasket maker.
After the gasket maker cured, I installed the valves with the new stronger springs. Here you can see we have a dual runner exhaust and a single high flow intake port. The spark plug was relocated in the middle of the combustion chamber for a cleaner and more efficient fuel mixture ignition. As you can tell on top things are pretty tight but everything fits so let's hope for the best. This is a side by side comparison of the old and the new valve layout. In theory we should see a major growth in performance. Next step is going to be the valve train. We have a dual overhead cap. On the right side we have a HDD5 pulley that's gonna be connected by a belt to the crankshaft and on the left side we have a couple of gears that's gonna transfer the rotation from the intake cam to the exhaust cam. On the left side we also have the ignition distributor which is the same design I use on all of my engines. A little knob on the cam is gonna break the circuit and we are gonna have a spark. Now if we look on the other side of the head we can actually see a holder for the cam position sensor. In the last design the sensor was glued with hot glue so this is a big step up. Anyways this is what the valve train looks like installed on the head. There is one thing I want to test before putting everything together and that is this new ground point. Let's see if we still have spark. I'd say that's a pretty solid spark. All that was left was to get everything tight to spec. I've also printed the intake out of PLA plus and the exhaust pipes out of carbon fiber reinforced nylon. Here we have a close up of how the head actually works. With everything ready I think it's time to start this bad boy. That was a short run. We had a cable disconnecting from the distributor. So I'm gonna fix that and we are gonna try again. Yep, you saw that right, the intake port failed, it literally split in half. I will have to keep this in mind for the next redesign. But for now I can continue the testing by spraying starter fluid directly in the port. Yet another cable failure. I did fix it and secured it to the cylinder body. And we are back to testing. Now that was a decent run, but something went wrong. Let's watch it one more time. Those intake flames should be enough of a sign of a jump timing. But just to be sure I checked everything again and it did in fact jump timing. So after realizing that the engine actually jumped timing, I decided to disassemble the whole thing to make sure that we don't have any damage to the valves or anything else that could lead to a catastrophic failure in the future. So I removed the head and this is what I found. When it comes to the crankshaft and connecting rod, everything looks good, but we can definitely see that the exhaust valves had contact with the piston. But luckily the valves are not bent, so we are safe for another round of testing. I replaced the 640 HTD5 belt with a 635, so basically a 5mm shorter belt, and I changed the location of the tensioner on the slack side of the belt. Well, something went terribly wrong with this run because we have no more compression and a bunch of click clacks inside the engine. Yeah, it's time to open it up to see the damage. So I removed the head, 
It seems like it has no damage to it, but the piston definitely suffered some damage. As you can tell it has a cut right in the middle, across the printing lines, and when I tried moving the crankshaft, the piston stayed in place. So let's go deeper into it. Well, the piston split in half, half of it is still inside the cylinder and the other half inside the crankcase. The cylinder sleeve had no damage, there's no up and down play in the connecting rod, but the connecting rod itself has some friction marks on the top and the bearing from the small end definitely moved and sits a bit higher. The connecting rod itself probably stretched. Well, we definitely ended this episode with a bang. Fortunately, there's a couple of things that need redesign, like the piston, and also we need a better tensioner because the fixed one I'm using right now, it's not doing the job. If you want to stay tuned with all the upgrades I'm doing to this engine, make sure you subscribe. Once again, a big thank you to Mykera for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching guys and see you in the next one.